let's talk pattern matching. Rust has this extremely powerful control flow operator called match, which you can use to compare value against a series of patterns and then execute code based on which patterns match. To me, this sounds like switch case on steroids. That's what I'm going to go with for now. Maybe it's more than that. We have a vector of fruits. So we have one, two, three, we got five fruits and we're saying loop through the index zero two and 99 and iterate through them this is the iter that we encountered last week from what i recall iterate through this array the first index will be zero then the second will be two and then 99. And then we're going to say match fruits dot get index we're going to say when it's zero we're going to say some fruit name and then we're going to print it's a delicious banana the first time on the second one it's going to be it's a delicious coconut and then on the third one i'm assuming it's going to say there is no fruit because vector under the hood is using the option of t as we can see in the output delicious banana delicious coconut there is no fruit that makes sense. I already like this. You can do more than a switch case. So it's saying that the fruits vector contains string elements. And that's why we know it's option of type ampersand str. I, I keep repeating this, but I think one of my favorite things about the language is the error messaging is really good. It's so explicit. It's the kind of thing if you're about to walk out the door, it'll say like, oh, you can't leave. Uh, you forgot to put your shoes on. You, you're you missing a belt and so on. It probably makes it even more approachable because it literally guides you. Let's come back here. We know it's an option of type ampersand str, which ampersand is a pointer. So it's a string pointer. We're saying some ampersand coconut that's saying if it matches that string, uh, we want to print coconuts are awesome. Otherwise, we just give the standard it's a delicious fruit and no fruit. Already, that's interesting. As expected, saying it's a delicious banana, coconuts are awesome. There is no fruit. Note that when the string value is coconut, the first arm is matched and then used to determine the flow of execution. Whenever you use the match expression, keep the following rules in mind. They're from top to bottom and match arms must cover every possible value that the input type could have. That makes sense. And given that we have the none, all the cases are always covered. 90% of this stream is going to be just moving things on the screen. We might learn Rust. We'll see. The if let expression. Rust offers a con convenient way to test whether a value conforms with a single pattern. Let's look at the option here. So this is an option of type uh, U8, which is a 8-bit integer. We're saying sum of 7. It can be a number or none. We want to match some number. If it's 7, we're going to say print. That's my lucky number. This is interesting. Syntax, the underscore lambda function that's empty. That means when there's nothing, don't do anything. It's just used to satisfy the compiler demands for exhausting match arms. Let's look here now. This is something I learned the other day. You can do, exp well, no, this is actually different. If let sum of seven equals some number, print, that's my lucky number. Sum is seven as above and we're saying set it. I'm kind of confused here because I thought it was double equals in the if. This is saying that's my lucky number if it's seven. Let me read through what they're saying here. An if let expression takes a pattern and an expression separated by an equal sign. If the pattern matches, the if block is executed. The nice thing about if let expressions is that you don't need all the boilerplate code of a match expression when you're interested in a single pattern to match against. The only thing I'm curious about is why not just an if? I'm sure there's a reason, but that's why we're here to learn. I'm going to copy this and if I go to the Rust playground, just want to see this in action. I have to do fn main. 
There we go. Match some number. That makes sense. I'm doing some obvious stuff here, but if I say six, it shouldn't print anything and it should go to the empty arm. That's good. That makes sense. Let's put that back. We'll run that. I want to try this one. If I run this. Some number doesn't exist. Got to copy that over. It should say that's my lucky number again. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the if let. I'm going to go back to read it. Rust offers a convenient way to test whether a value conforms with a single pattern. Oh, okay, I get it. I guess you want to do the if. It's like a short hand, so you don't have to do like all the arms of the pattern matching. That I get. But at the same time, why not just do an if? Why if let? You can use it by using an if let expression. The following code behaves the same as the previous, I think I understand now. So this is the declaration. Oh, wait, no, I'm still having trouble understanding it here. I understand what it's doing to some degree, but I'm trying to figure out why you would do that. Let's go back to the Rust playground. I'm going to run it just so it says that's my lucky number. I've got to define some number. I did the same thing before I'm repeating myself. But, uh, but thank you for the very clear errors, Rust. Again, this is going to say that's my lucky number. I get that. The first thing is that, but I still don't get it. We still have to define the variable. That's a given. That's why this let here is confusing me. I'm just curious. I want to try this. It might fail. If sum equals some number, it would have to be like this. That's what I would have thought to do. And that's why I'm confused. I'm just trying to understand why you would want this. That's the reason. I'm definitely going to read up more on this after because I don't think they're going to go into tons of details. But that's what I would have gone with because like, I don't see the difference between that. And at least right now, I don't. I'm sure I will, but that's my lucky number, the old school way. This is where it's weird. I don't think it's assigning it to some number because some number is already equal to seven or, or sum of seven. This is saying if some number's value is equal to sum of seven, this looks trivial because we're saying the same thing twice, but we're saying some, some number is equal to type of sum of seven here we're saying we have that value does it match that i guess the if let is its way of saying if some number is equal to this print it but again i at least right now i don't understand the value of this versus the regular if statement and there's definitely got to be a reason. Let's move on to the next bit. Use unwrap and expect. You can try to access the inner value of an option type directly by using the unwrap method. Be careful though, because this will panic if the variant is a none. This is kind of like going under the hood. I feel like this is kind of like if you were Kind of the same dangers as if you were to cast something in C sharp or TypeScript, for example. It's not the same thing, but you can cast and say it's this, but if it doesn't end up being it, things blow up in your face. I think the unwrap is like, whoa, folks, I know what I'm doing here. Let me unwrap this and let's see what we got. Here we're saying, let gift some candy and then unwrap it to get the string. I guess you might want to do this if you need a type of string, maybe instead of the sum type, because you need to use it somewhere. That's what I'm thinking. But let's see here. Let's copy this. Let's come back to the Rust playground. I did create a repository for all this stuff, but I've been so far finding it easier to go through the Rust playground. We're saying here, let gift is equal to some candy. We're just doing an assertion here since the string here is candy. This should definitely equal candy. 
then we're saying let empty gif option of type string reference is equal to none this is where they say explodes assert equals let's unwrap the gift and make sure it's equal to candy it is not it will blow up if we run this that makes sense so now what would be interesting is it shouldn't panic if i do this oh interesting can't compare a string with oh okay it's because i said it's of type not interesting you can set it oh it's because it's option t i wonder how you would get none directly uh, let's see here interesting i would have thought it would be able to compare them but because this is unwrapping it it's saying it's supposed to be a string though but and the only reason why i can set it to none is because it's option of type t there that's why that doesn't work there's no way to compare the two types even though it's none and none, we are in a strongly typed language. That's why. We'll keep reading, but I think the reason you want to unwrap is when you really need whatever value is in there, not the type of the whole thing. I think that makes sense. Let's keep moving on here. But panic, the expect method does the same as unwrap, but it provides a custom panic message that's provided by its second argument. This is where the power of Rust starts to, to come into play because this is where this taps into the really good error messages. Let's copy this over. Let's go to the playground. We're going to say here, let A equal some value, assert A to expect fruits are healthy, and it's supposed to be this value. And this one, B is of type option string, and we're setting it to none here we're saying unwrap the value or but using the expect to get a better error message and let's run that the first one should say that fruits are let's see here thread main panicked at fruits are healthy I'm not sure why they're using the error message fruits are healthy i'll change it to this should be equal to some value and then I'm going to change this and then that should panic with that message I just updated how come it didn't give me my special message am I rusting wrong what's going on let's see here why did this not do that expect oh okay I know what I did wrong it's here so because it's it's doing the unwrapping with this custom error message if this is no that's not going to work well, let's see let's run this it should assert that they're not equal that's still failing now if i did none i guess let's try that i'm just rusting wrong at the moment oh i didn't explicitly set the type here that's why so if i do this and then i set this to none let's run that the first error should say this should be some value that's why it's expecting this when you unwrap to be something and it's not something it's none i can put value here again i would have to do this i guess but i'm just trying to think of when we go back to what it was originally oh it did have some value before because these functions might panic we don't recommend using them instead consider either of the following approaches use pattern matching and handle the none case explicitly the pattern matching in that sense is a more elegant way to avoid panic. That makes sense. Call similar non-panicking methods such as unwrap underscore or, which returns a default value if the variant is none. That's a, a handy method. So some dog dot unwrap or cat. This should still be dog, but here, none unwrap or cat should be cat at that point. Okay, cool. I think that makes sense. Next unit, exercise. Use the option type to deal with absent. This exercise will finish implementing a function that receives a person struct and returns a string that contains its full name. Keep in mind that some people don't have a middle name, but if they do, it must be included in the return value. You must edit 
only the build full name function. Note that the part that handles the first and last names has already been implemented for you. I can see the or default mechanism. It makes sense because you want to have a sensible default. Because I guess at the end of the day, you really don't want your program panicking or halting for stuff that you could most likely recover from. We have our person struct. We covered structs last week. The first name is string. The middle name is optional. So it's option of type string. And the last name is a string as well. So we're going to build the full name just to go over the syntax here in case folks weren't here the past two times. So FN is for function. This here is saying this is the return type. So it's a string. This is a reference to a person and that gets passed in in the build name down here. Probably if we build full name ampersand John, which is going to take in this. A few other things to mention the MUT MUT here. It, mean, it means mutable as in it can be changed because in Rust, everything by default is immutable, which I think is a sensible default. When you do put MUT there, it's explicit. You're 100% aware. You're very conscious of what you're doing. If, if you've done any React, if you want to use inner HTML, there's a, a built-in prop called dangerously set inner HTML. And it's called dangerously set inner HTML because they're making it fully aware what you are doing. You shouldn't do unless you know what you're doing. And we'll bring up the, that brings up the Spider-Man's uncle quote, as always with great power comes great responsibility. I feel like I'm going to be saying that like every stream now we got the full name here. We're going to say it's a new string. And so we don't know what the size is. So that's why we're using this string here. And we can push to it kind of like an array. So full name, we're going to say push string. We're going to push the person's first name. The reason why we're doing that is because it is not optional. It is required to create a person struct. So we're guaranteed to have that. That's going to be the first part. Then we're putting a space here. And then there's the to do, which is what we're supposed to do. And then there's the last name. Let's try it a few ways. You know what? I think this is where the if let makes sense. Wait, if let, how do I do some of, I don't know if they have a middle name. Let me just go back to the exercise. Just want to go back, checking something out here. Where was the let in the pattern matching? Yeah, the if let makes sense. I think I know what I can do. I think I understand why you want to do it now because we're matching a pattern, even though we don't know the value. If we do, if let option of, is it ampersand str equals middle then we're going to say, do I have to use the brackets around the if? No, I don't. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, not having the parentheses around the conditional. Well, it's not a conditional in this case. So maybe that's why. In this case, I'm going to say full name dot push str. And then we're just going to say person middle. I'm just going to read through this to reiterate my thinking. I don't know if this will be considered a pattern match or not, because this is a type. I wonder, well, let's just try this. I think this will always be true because it's going to say match to option of type string reference. So that will include none as well, I believe. Let's see here. Expected one of equals or pipe found. So I can't use the type. Can I do this? Some amper. I think it's going to give me the same thing or an error. This expression has type option string expected. Oh, yeah, whoops. That should have been ampersand person dot middle. No, wait. Option string, which should be. Oh, string. Let's see here. Expected str found enum option. Oh, okay. Wait. 
maybe I can just do this because expected str found enum option. Let's try this. So this is saying if the types match. Okay, expected str found enum option. Yeah, that's not going to work. It can be two of those values. I'm trying to, because if we go back to the trivial example here, we're saying some number is equal to sum of seven. It's trivial because we know it's already been set to seven, so we can actually say what it's going to be. Let's see here. Yeah, there's the or default, but that means it's putting a value then, no? I mean, I know what the value is because I know the middle name is Oliver, but I don't. Oh, I see what you're saying, Kirk. Uh, that's a that's pretty smart. Yeah, that's a good idea. But but they were saying don't use the. Oh yeah. Use matter pattern matching, and handle the none, for non panic methods such as unwrap or which default. I think the unwrap or makes more sense. I was just trying to go through the pattern matching stuff to see, but yeah, un unwrap underscore. That is the winner winner chicken dinner. What was the syntax again? Unwrap or, okay, got it. Oops. Should be after unwrap or, and then we'll go empty string like you suggest Kirk. And then, yeah, that's good. In both cases, we should be good. And let's see what that gives us. Maybe this is not the type. If I just do unwrap or expected struct string found ampersand str. No, I don't want to use a conversion method. What if I did this? But push. No, I don't think that'll work. You're saying use match instead, but it says dot to string. It sounds kind of funny though to do string dot to string. You know what I mean? I mean, this probably will work. No, that doesn't work. Uh, method not found in static str underscores not count. Sorry, having a case of the JavaScripts. We'll run this. Cannot move out of person middle, which is behind a shared reference. Move occurs because person dot middle has type option string, which does not implement the copy traits. Help consider borrowing the options content. Kind of curious here though, because this is the reference to person. So why are we doing a reference to here? Interesting. Given that it's telling me exactly what to do. I'm going to try it, but I do want to understand what's going on here. And then as ref, let's try that and see. Expected string found struct string help consider <laughs> borrowing here. It's going to be like two string, two string, 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 string. Anyways, let's get it working first and then we'll dissect it to get it in a state where we want it to work. It panicked, left James Alt. We should put in a space as well. That's why pattern matching might fit better because we would have to do, yeah, you see, cause we'd have to, I think, don't worry if you're out of your depth. It's, I like being out of my comfort zone here. So the thing is we would want to add another, sorry, not that. At this point, because there is a middle name, we want to add another one here, but we can't do that all the time because in the case where we unwrap and there's nothing and we put the default empty string, we can't always push a blank space. I think this is why we will have to go to pattern matching. The thing is there's already a space here. So we got first name space. If there's no middle name, then we get the last name. But in the case of a middle name, we do need to add that extra space, but we can't do that this way. I like how going through this exercise, we've realized we have to do pattern matching. Now, the only thing is I not sure what to match against because the example we went through, we knew the value was sum of seven, 
and it was checking the pattern to see does it equal like is the pattern sum of seven if so print it's your lucky number but in our case we can obviously see the value here but in the next one there is none we can't make any guesses and it would be silly to hard code what the values are i like how we've kind of gone through that and hit some pain points so we can figure out what we really need to do it's either none or it's some value that i get but the thing is we don't know what the value is going to be so like the none case i get i, I guess i'm looking for the pattern match when it's some any value and I don't know what that syntax is. That's that's where I'm kind of at. If we come back here, and this is also a perfect reason to use the if let now. I think what we'll do for exercise sake is, let me go back to where they had the example with the pattern matching here. So yeah, here we kind of want this, but you see they have, ampersand coconut which means the string coconut some fruit oh i i think i know no i'm not sure. yeah i think i know now i'm not positive i think i just overcomplicated things going through that exercise but i'm glad it did i'm going to comment these out for a sec and i will talk this out as i do it let's go with the match for now we want to match and then we want to do ampersand person middle. That's what we want to match against. If it's none, we're not going to do anything. I'm going to print it out just so we can see it visually in the compiler. There is no middle name for, and then I'm going to do this and we'll say ampersand person first yeah exactly x some value let's get rid of that i kind of want to i think it's maybe ampersand st is that what it was saying it was and in this case what we can do and i'm assuming we can use a block here what we can do is we'll say full name push if we read through this, let's match on the person's middle name. If it's some of the string type, do the push. Otherwise, none. I, I might not have this type right. We'll find out shortly. So let's go. This is okay, though. Expect struct string found reference. You can probably remove the explicit borrow str. I don't know if that's what that means. Expected str found option interesting do i do this no that doesn't make sense because that's the type itself let's see here yeah no that's right let me undo that oh, wait expected tuple struct or tuple variant found enum option it's enum option because middle is num of option string but this is where I'm like, what should it be? I've got the push string here. I'm just wondering. It's, the thing is, this doesn't make sense what I'm proposing here because it, it really should be sum of something because option of type string, if we go up here, option of type string is either some string or nothing. At this point, it's just a syntax thing. I don't think I'm getting it correct here it's whatever is in here i just have to get that right and then i think we should be good i'm hoping my rust errors will say here nick this is what you need to do so it's actually coming in here now so we can do unwrap or okay i think i know what this is shaping into let's just do that it's gonna fail when it tries people without middle names what is it wrong here Expected struct string. Yeah, I'm going to do the dot two string again. This part seems silly, but let's get it. It's good of going through this pain because it helps me figure out what is it. Unused variable string now in line 17. Why? When it, no person middle needed, Nick. You already deconstructed it. I'm not following you, Kirk. 
The line 17 is just a variable you're making up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, you think I can just do... Well, I didn't... I wasn't treating it as a variable, but yeah, it is a variable. You're right. But I don't think this will work. Like, I really want to say if has some value here. And I don't mind if I'm not getting this right away because once it does sink in, I will never forget. Yeah. I get that I'm just making this up here. I, I definitely don't want to keep that here. Yeah, no. Person, match person, middle. Some Well, some variable to be used is... Yeah, I just don't know what that some variable to be used is. Hold on here. So I'm going to go back to, I might be a little thick in the head here right now, and that does not bother me. That's good. Some, but there was, oh yeah, some fruit name, but fruit name was a string. Okay, wait. I, okay, no, I think I know what it is. Match. This is going to sound silly, but it's not. This doesn't make sense to me either. Then line 18 is full name pusher. If it's fruit name is the variable you invent to hold the data in some case. Okay. Okay. Let me just go back to the example. If we come here, some number, some seven. Some you ate. It's not clicking in my head yet. Yeah, no, that I get fruit name. Well, we're not dealing with fruit names now, but it's the variable you invent. I have has some values, a string in some case. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. So this should be like this, for example. And then we can do this. Yeah, I think that's what you mean. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Compile. That's not an error from us. That's the, this is what I saw happening with the playground last week, a couple times. I, I like, awesome. Thank you for staying with me on that. Both of you. Boom. Yes, we did it. I like that. I went through this pain point because this is going to stick in my head now. I don't get it. I don't get it. I get it. I, I think what was throwing me off is cause like in a switch case, you'll say like switch the name of the variable that you want to compare the values to and the cases have the values. That's where I was kind of getting my head stuck. I know I can't specify the type because that's not the value. But anyways, this is saying whatever the value is that's coming in to be matched at that point, I can use it. And because we've got it in the sum, we already know that it's it's not none. So the only other option is that it's a string. I'm saying these things out loud just to kind of reinforce it in my own brain. Oh, cool. That makes sense. We got the full name. We're pushing the middle name and we add the extra space because they have a middle name. So, okay, that's great. I don't want to stop here though. Let's do a couple other things. We can do this. This is the other way of doing the pattern matching. So you want to match against things. And if something doesn't match, we have this empty Lambda here to just say, catch anything else aside from what we're trying to match here. That works. Now, let me just run this. I, I like going explicitly through this. So this just really sinks into my head. This is how I learn things. Sometimes, sometimes I get it right away, but other times it's like this. Don't get it. Don't get it. Got it. So this works because we don't need the whole match. This is where the if let comes in. So I'm going to comment this out for a sec. We're going to say if let, and I guess we'll say some middle name. Now I will not forget some middle name. Just checking the syntax for the if let. Yeah, it's the value there. Ampersand person dot middle equals what we think it's going to be just validating that syntax here. This is what we're comparing it to. And this is what we want coming in. And then we're going to do the, that's my thing there. So let's take these two. We're saying if middle name, which is the value in here, that's not none. If it isn't none, we're going to use it. I think this is how it 
will work. If not, I got to reverse it. Let's see. The suspense is killing me. I hope you all brought popcorn. Expected one of aborting due to previous error. Oh, well, thank you, Rust. We know this is working, so that's good. I think I need to reverse these. I think that makes sense because we're saying this is the value coming in, which is the match value coming in. And then come in to there. And I'm just going to do a print LN in here just to make sure. I mean, it didn't error out, but I just want to say what did, <laughs> what did Steph write? We did it, Joe. All right, let's run this. So this should happen in two cases. It should say we did it, Joe, because there's two folks with a with the middle name. So if we run this, we did it, Joe. We did it, Joe. And you know what? We did do it, Joe. I'm repeating a lot of stuff here because this is how things sink in. I like how we went through this whole process. We first tried saying like, let's use that unwrap. And, but then we ran into the problem of we didn't get the unwrap right for one. <laughs> but the other thing is even if the unwrap was working there, we'd still have to do, if we do have a middle name, we have to add this, but only if there is a middle name, then we went to the match. If we start comment that for a sec, we're saying we want to match some value for the middle name. If there is some value in there and that value, we just give it a name. So we're going to give it middle underscore name to make it explicit that it's the middle name. If that has a value, so it's not none, for example, because we had none here before, then we're going to say push to the string, add the middle name and add the space as well. I, I get it now why you need the if let in some cases now. I know I spent a lot of time there, but once it sinks in, you know, well, I say it's sunk in, but who knows, maybe next week I'll be like, what the heck's pattern matching? I think this is really good. And thanks for everybody kind of going through it with me. I think we got a good grasp on pattern matching with all the cases, pattern matching for certain things. And then we have a default one that's the escape hatch to say funnel everything else there. In the case when we only want to do one check, the if let makes sense for the pattern matching. If let's a nice shortcut. This one exercise has made it clear to me why pattern matching is powerful. We spent pretty much the whole stream talking about pattern matching, which is, I don't think a bad thing. I think we're going to call it here, but I just want to say thanks squad for showing up. I'm glad you had a lot of fun moving stuff on the screen and thanks for the encouragement and the thoughtful answers and help in the chat. 